We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this morning's session, uh, which is a very special session because this is dealing with two names of mercy in Surah Al-Fatiha. As you recall, we began uh, about five sessions ago in Surah Al-Fatiha. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Rahman Rahim. So we began with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then last time we reflected on Rabb al alameen What does Rabb mean in this uh, in this ayah? Uh, today's session is uh, primarily focused on these two names of mercy both of which derive from the same root, which is very interesting in the sense that uh, it is connected with the womb of the mother. So Rahim is literally the, the womb. And uh, by uh, Istaara, Raghib Lasfani says that it is uh, through the istaara, which is the metaphoric use, that it is used for uh, karaba, which is the relationship. So Silatul Raham is one of the fundamental aspects of the Quranic description of human relationships. We are connected with other human beings through the mother's womb because we all occupy the same womb. By all, I mean the, the siblings. And uh, as opposed to the uh, bloodline, as opposed to the emphasis on, on the blood, which is normally in the Western civilization, we talk about the bloodline. But it is the Silatul Rahim in the Quran. We have Silatul Rahim. So it would be very fundamental for us to begin reflecting on these two names, as we always do, by going back to the fundamentals, which in this case is Raha Meem. And uh, Raha Meem uh, has a very soft feeling to it. Raham is very soft and uh, it has built in concept of uh, Rikka, which is uh, uh, which is the softness, which is the uh, which is the aspect of having uh, having softness and from that softness uh, comes uh, rikkatul kalb which is the rikkatul kalb which is uh, compassion perhaps is a i'm searching for a, for a good word for rikka um, Rikka is tenderness of the heart and leaning that uh, leads to showing favors and good treatment. So, uh, Rahim, Rahim, the womb of the mother is a place of Rikka, is a place of uh, showing mercy is a place which is uh, which is the home for the babies when they are conceived. We were all at that one point in the Raham, in the womb of the mother. The womb of the mother is called Rahim because Rahim is fundamentally uh, connected with the uh, softness, the sense of protection, the sense of giving, the sense of uh, uh, 
providing sustenance all of these things are part of the uh, of the of the root root word now when we make uh, uh, Ra Asfani, as always uh, he says that arahma is the tenderness of the heart that is given or is applied uh, to the one who is marhum, to, who, to the one who actually receives uh, this tenderness. So, Rahimullahu Falanan, we say Rahimullahu Falanan, may Allah have Rahim on so and so, uh, and it has a sense of Ahsan. In the Rahma in Allahi in Ami Mafdali Aminal Adimin Rikati Vata Tatav. See, there is a there is a very fine distinction here that is being made between the kind of mercy, the kind of uh, tenderness that Allah SWT has for his creation and the kind of uh, uh, rikka that the mother would have or any other human being would have. So, Rahimallahu Fulanan means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, uh, has, has tenderness of mercy or ihsan on so and so. There is a hadith, uh, hadith Qudsi actually, this is the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, but the wording is of the Prophet so that's what is called hadith Qudsi. Zakiran an rabbihi annahu lamma khalaka rahima qala lahu ana rahman wa anti rahim shakak tu tusmak uh, mean is me. So now this Akutsi says that uh, when Allah SWT created the womb, he said, An Rahman, I am a Rahman, wa anti Rahim, and you are Rahim. I have Shakak to Ismik. Ismaka min ismi. See, the wording is so intense here. Shakak, you know, shakak is uh, splitting. When something is taken from another thing by splitting it, like we have a full uh, something complete and we take a bite out of it, we have shakak. We have taken one sep sample or one small bite from something. Allah SWT says in this Hadith Akutsi that uh, even the name of the womb, I have taken it out of my name. I have taken your name out of my name. So the one who attaches uh, one who attaches the womb I will attach him. And the one who uh, ki, the one who cuts the relationship of the womb, I will uh, oh, This is a very, very strong word. Batattuhu meaning to crush, pound, to Pulverize. It's a very, very strong word. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says to the to the womb that you have been created, and I have given you a name that is part of my name. I've taken your name from my own name, Rahman, Faman Basalaki, 
and the one who connects with you was I will connect to him or her, the person who does it. And in this is an indication, Rahman Rahimullah says, of what we just said before, and that is uh, in, in the Rahim, we have the Rikka, the sense of Rikka, which is the tenderness and um, of Ihsan. Fasara kaman na lafz rahima min rahim. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put this rikkatul kalb, this rahim, this tenderness of the heart in his creation, whereas he has kept ihsan to himself. The point she is making is very fine and very important and very subtle. So let's try to understand it. The foundational primary meaning of uh, Rahim has two aspects. One is Rikka and one is Ahsan. The point he's making is that the Rikka Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also placed in the Tabai, in the uh, in the in the built-in natural disposition of the creation, the Ba'il Nas. Whereas the Farrada Bil Ihsan, he has kept Ihsan to himself. Fasara kama anna lafz rahima min rahim. So just as the word uh, rahima, is from Rahma. Likewise, the meaning, one of the two meanings of this word that is um, in the creation, in people, is like, like, that that part that aspect of the of the meaning of rahim that is in people which is the softness tenderness of the heart uh, is of two uh, is is just one aspect of it whereas ihsan is totally uh, for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then we need to know what does it mean ihsan and then uh, we, we ihsan we are told is something that does not require paying back. And this will come further, inshallah, as we proceed. There are two aspects of Rikatul Kalb. There are two aspects of having mercy, having rahma on someone. One necessitates some kind of repayment, some kind of uh, on the part of the one who receives this rahma from someone, uh, there is a built-in inherent demand also in that act of giving something, whether it's material or non-material, whether it's material in the sense of any, any material thing like food or money or property or anything, or it's immaterial like love and care and some people can say, well, I love my child regardless. I don't need anything in repayment, but that's not true. That's just false. Um, whenever a human being does something, there is always a hidden or an apparent need behind it. Even they say the need to do a good deed. That in itself is a need. Uh, so we are doing something. Tender, we're showing tenderness of the heart. Uh, we are doing this out of our own necessity. Rahman and Rahim, they are both a small husna. They are both uh, names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know these. 
But the question is why are two names, Rahman and Rahim, and why are they in this particular order? What is the difference between a Rahman and a Rahim? This is a fundamental discussion in all the fasirs that we have. And uh, because uh, Baidavi, Imam Baidavi's uh, tafsir is uh, really very important in terms of understanding uh, linguistic aspects uh, of the Quran. However, uh, because he also goes to the same places where we are going directly, uh, Raghav Lasfani and other others who came before him. So you find a lot of common content in both, although they are both using it in their own sense. So in the case of the wonderful dictionary that we have from Imam Raghib al-Sfahani, he says that uh, they are both fa'ulan uh, and fa'il. Uh, and we also have uh, have this in uh, uh, Baidavi's uh, tafsir that uh, they are both uh, intense. Now, Mubaliga, uh, Mubaliga is sometimes translated as exaggeration, but exaggeration has other connotations because it can be uh, false. Whereas Mubaliga is a technical term in Arabic uh, uh, which uh, means intensification. So Rahman wa Rahim like Nadman wa Nadim. They are both uh, intense and uh, Rahman ablahu min Rahim. Uh, Imam Badawi says that a Rahman is more intensive than a Rahim. And uh, if you look at the morphology, uh, there is additional uh, additional letters a Rahman, a Rahim, as in uh, Kata and Katta as kubar and kubbar. When we add letters, he says, then we are making it uh, more intense. And intensity can be either in terms of quantity or in terms of modality. So a Rahman In Rahim, they are both names of mercy. They are both uh, beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But let's note their mutual differences. The first is that Rahman is ablahu min Rahim, is more intensive than Rahim. And the proof of that is also in the addition of more letters like kata and katta. Kata is to cut. Katta is to cut into pieces. And kubar is big. And kubar, kubar with the double ba is huge. So from just big, it becomes huge. The second. They say that, and this is in many tafasis, including Baidavi, uh, that uh, Rahman of this dunya and a Rahim of the next. And uh, the explanation here is that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a Rahman for every single creation that he has created. He is a Rahman. He, whether anybody acknowledges him, thanks him or not, even those who say there is no God, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a Rahman. He feeds them, he sustains them, they breathe, their lungs are functioning, 
their stomachs are working, their feet are there, their hands are there. All of these are the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they say we don't have any God, there is no God, but he is a Rahman. He does not uh, he does not behave with them on the basis of what they are doing. On the other hand, a Rahim is uh, uh, intense as well. The one who who is merciful over and over and over. But in this particular context, many Mufassirs, they say that uh, uh, it refers to uh, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter, which is momentous, but that would be only for the believers. When, when our scholars reflect on the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they really, they, they really, really reflect, not like us. Um, so they say a Rahman cannot be used for anyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas a Rahim uh, can be used for both Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and others. So the example that is given is Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 182. Inna allaha ghafoor rahim And then uh, we have in Surah Tawbah, Ayah 128. Lakad jaakum rasoolum min anfusikum. Azizun alayhi ma'anittum harisun alaykum bil mu'mineen raufur rahim. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is calling the Prophet as the Salaam Rahim, Raufur Rahim. And of course there is no Al here. Al is specific to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But no one can be called a Rahman. There is uh, <laughs> no one can be called a Rahman. Uh, there is a very very interesting uh, aspect of uh, of this particular explanation that no one can be called. Uh, no one can be called uh, Rahman other than Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The little addition that uh, we find in some of the tafasirs uh, is about uh, the person who is known to us as the arch lawyer, Musalama al Kazab, Musalama the arch lawyer. And uh, he gave himself the title of Rahman of Imama. So when they say no one can be called a Rahman, uh, there is this clear example of someone naming himself a Rahman, and then the uh, the the title that he received, among other claims that he made, is that of arch liar, kazab, which is intensified. Uh, kazib is uh, someone who, who is a lawyer, but a kazab is like uh, the extreme, extreme uh, situation of, of being the lawyer. So he, he lied and there is no content to his being Rahman of Yamama. Now, when we when we when we say these were giants, these scholars were giants. You know, they are giants because of what they have left behind. That is a proof of their uh, enormous uh, brilliance 
intense reflections, deep anchoring in the Quranic worldview. Um, their minds were just so uh, focused. Uh, like who would think of, uh, among us, for example, who would think of Rahman or Rahim? Uh, we will just recite it uh, hundreds of times, but would we think that why is it in this order? Uh, uh, can we ask that uh, yeah. the rules dictate that progression is from lower to higher? This is Imam Baidavi. But here we have a Rahman before a Rahim. Why? So, because the mercy of this world takes place first, and a Rahman is merciful in this world to everyone, and because it has become like a proper name, since none other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be described as a Rahman. Because the meaning is the true guarantor of bounty who reaches the utmost in mercy. So this cannot be the case. This is the point I was mentioning before. This cannot be the case for anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَذَلِكَ لَا يَسْدُكُ عَلَىٰ غَيْرِهِ لِأَنَّ مَنْ عَدَاهُ فَهُوَ مُسْتَعِيدٌ بِاللُّطْفِهِ وَإِنْعَامِهِ Yuridu bihi jazira sawab, au jamira thana, au yazi hu rikkat al jinsiyati, au hub al mali an il kalb. Imam Bedavi says that uh, only Allah SWT can be called the true, uh, uh, Rahman can only be used for Allah SWT because his mercy, his utmost mercy is such that no other can can have that because since all others uh, who show any rikka, who show any tenderness of the heart, who do any act of mercy, they do so for repayment in exchange, for giving that kindness, giving that favor. And only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, does it uh, without the need to receive anything. Number two, anyone who gives anything to anyone, whether it's material or immaterial, um, is decreased. His time, her time, his money, her money, his emotions, his energies, uh, everything. Mothers are special because they have the biggest um, biggest heart in terms of giving, especially to the to the child in the womb, to the baby in the womb. Uh, they carry, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, uh, in great, with great, uh, um, you know, a great burden. They carry us for so long in the womb and they don't they don't expect children to repay you know at least at that time but later on they also have needs they they also have some expectations um, so all of this makes it clear that a rahman can only be uh, And can only be used for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So four points why a Rahman is before a Rahim. I'm going to repeat them. Number one, because a Rahman is inclusive of Allah's mercy to the entirety of his creation. And uh, you know, some of the 
professors, they actually give examples of uh, Allah's mercy um, from the from the various realms of existence. And one of the examples that I found very fascinating is from Razi, and he's talking about crows. And when the crow is born, the baby crow is called chick. When the chicks are born, uh, they are unable to eat anything, like many other birds as well. But it's the father, he says, who uh, feeds the baby crows until they are able to, because the mother um, is busy in keeping the nest and taking care of the other uh, chicks, or if she's, if there are still uh, eggs being hatched, uh, the warmth, the temperature requires for hatching uh, is so precise and it has to be maintained like if the mother just leaves the eggs. And this is true for, for all eggs, uh, all creation born out of eggs, hatched out of eggs. Just the tenderness, they're just the care required. I mean, you know, these are, these are so many obvious examples that this could not be just evolution. Like who, who is who is going to sit uh, for uh, 21 days on these eggs and not even go for eating? And these father crows, they go around and they bring food for the mothers so mothers can stay. Yeah, and he, you know, this is, so it's just reflections on, because Ar-Rahman is, is mentioned first because it's mercy for, for all the creations. Number two, and because this is a proper name for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so although both are a small husna, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, we say, but Ar-Rahman is the only, uh, only, only name, only uh, a small husna is it's included in a small husna, but it comes very close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, the word Allah itself, and we will go into details of the when we see the usage of Ar-Rahman in the Quran. Uh, this is very close to word Allah in the sense of uh, being exclusive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although Allah is still superior because that is the ism zat. That is the essence. That is the essence. So Ar-Rahman, um, because, you see the point here is that because the that, the essence, the being of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who can be called Ar-Rahman, therefore Ar-Rahman comes close to the word Allah. That's the second reason why this is before Ar-Rahim. Number three, There is Jalaili Niami Vasuliha. Imam Baidabi says that uh, Rahman points to the sublime and fundamental favors of the first order. And Rahim uh, to address everything outside the first order, like a compliment. Like a compliment. So, Zakar Rahima liyata nawala ma kharaja minha fayakunu tatimmati varadi filahu. Tatimmati is the completion, and radif is what follows in tandem. And the fourth reason, and this is really fascinating. أو للمحافظة على رؤوس الأي. He says that this is for the رؤوس الأي, meaning the heads of the ayats. 
He'll, for the protection of the heads of the ayahs. Now, who would understand anything from this one single line? He says, Ar-Rahman and rahim are in this order for the protection of the heads of the ayahs. But the, the meaning actually is not the heads, but the ending of Akhir. Now, if we look at the um, if we look at the whole surah, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, Rahman, Rahim, Malik, Yawmiddin. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem. Sirat al-ladhina an'amta alayhim. Ghayri al-maghdubi alayhim walandolim. What do we have here? in terms of the rhythm of the ayahs is the kasra is the ya that comes uh, the ending sound rahim alhamdulillah rabbil alamin maliki yawmiddin so all of these uh, second last letters have this uh, softness in them, this ya. Uh, so this is one of the uh, the beauties uh, of the of the book of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and uh, this is mentioned by Imam Siyuti and uh, and others as well. And they say that uh, this is Saja, this is the rhyming prose, uh, rhyming prose in prose. And so, although you know, there is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's book is neither um, poetry nor prose in the sense of uh, how these are classified, but in his uh, Alitekan. Imam Suti has number 59, the type 59 uh, is devoted to this question of these rhymes in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have four reasons for a Rahman to be uh, before a Rahim. Next we, we have that uh, Rahman cannot be pluralized or feminized. Cannot be pluralized or feminized. So, Annahu Ghairu Masrufin. And uh, regardless of the fact that it's being used exclusively for Lasmanatara, it precludes its having a feminine with the forms Fa'ala or so this, this goes into, into the grammatical so the the connect there is a very beautiful connection here it's very subtle Allah subhanahu wa chose وَإِنَّمَا خَسَّثَ التَّسْمِيَةَ بِهَذِي الْأَسْمَاءِ لِيَعْلَمَ الْعَارِفُ أَنَّ الْمُسْتَحِقَّ لِأَنْ يُسْتَعَانَ بِهِ فِي مَجَامِ الْأَمُورِ وَهُوَ الْمَعْبُودُ الْحَقِيقِ الَّذِي هُوَ مُولِي أَنْعَامِ كُلِّهَا وَآجِلِهَا وَآجِلِهَا جَلِيلِهَا وَحَكِيرِهَا سبحان الله he says that uh, Allah SWT chose to be named by these names so that the Arif, the one who really knows the knower in the real sense, 
would realize that the one and only truly deserving to be sought for help in all matters is he who is truly worshipped, who is the guarantor of all favors, both the immediate and the deferred. The sublime favors as well as regular favors, turning therefore with every last shred of his being to the divine presence and firmly gra grasping the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Immersing his or her inward being with his remembrance and taking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as as his or her sufficiency without any other. Yashwala sirrahu bi zikrihi wal istidadi bihi an ghairihi. Subhanallah. So Allah SWT has taken has has used these two names of mercy in in this uh, surah which which has uh, the totality of the quran and he has used these names of mercy uh, two names of mercy one after the other in order to convey to the one who really knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone is to be sought. He alone is the one to be worshipped. And the one who truly attaches um, oneself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Rahman is exclusively uh, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like uh, Imam Baidavi, we also have a very systematic explanation of these two names in other tafasirs, especially Razi. He, he has seven benefits, or fawaid, he calls them benefits, or fawaid. Um, and uh, he discusses... He discusses many of uh, many of the questions that he himself first poses. So that's the brilliance of uh, of his mind. Uh, and one of the one of the questions that uh, we also sort of uh, have to deal with. And these are questions which uh, non-Muslims pose or some of the youth when they start to question deen. Um, one of the things they point out contradicts everything that we have said so far. That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is really a Rahman and Rahim, then why this misery? Why this evil? And uh, you know these are these are really serious questions with which uh, parents uh, 
their response is normally not very adequate. When it comes to children, when it comes to children who are in our care and protection, and we raise them according to the best of our abilities, and then they grow up and then they say, well, thank you, but I don't think, I don't think, you know, this, this is the case because look, don't you see all this suffering? So if he's a Rahman, Rahim, merciful, So our scholars have answered all of these questions hundreds of years ago and our response should not be well at the emotional level because these are real questions that appear in the human mind and they have been answered. So I I'll just um, I'll just point out one beautiful example that Imam Razi, has in this sense. And he says that uh, the father who allows his son to do whatever he wishes and does not discipline him and does not ask him to study, does not push him to study, uh, this may have an appearance of being merciful, be, being tender-hearted, but in fact, this is the opposite of it. Now, the second type is if a father confines his son to the classroom and forces him to study, this appears to be uh, something lacking the mercy, lacking the tenderness of the heart. If uh, if makadalikal insana ida makafi yadil akilata if if gangrene afflicts a person's hand and it has to be amputated it may appear that this is azab but in fact, in reality, it is relief and mercy. So the point he is making here is that uh, appearances are not always what the reality is. And it's only the... Uh, it's only the the person who reaches to the reality of things who can go beyond the appearances. So based on this, every type of uh, tribulation, pain or difficulty in this world, though it appears outwardly to be torment and suffering, is in reality wisdom and mercy. So the wisdom in uh, creating the hellfire is to derive the wicked to perform the deeds of the righteous, drawing them from the fleeting abode of to the everlasting home. So flee to God. Uh, now, all of this is, of course, based on the fundamental reality that uh, when, when we are created, uh, we only there are only two kinds of human beings, shakyun wa sa'id. And the entirety of the Quran is an invitation for all humanity to be Sa'id, to be uh, those who would be successful in the hereafter.
And the purpose of uh, all the ahkam, why Allah SWT says pray five times a day, fast the month of Ramadan, go for Hajj, all of these things is to help us gain that supreme success in the hereafter. Allah SWT doesn't get anything out of our salahs or fasting or anything. He is beyond all of that. Uh, because he's a Rahman. And uh, therefore, what appears to be Azab uh, may in fact be blessing. So when a child asks, well, you see this suffering of uh, so-and-so um, evil in the world, earthquakes, tsunamis, sudden deaths. I don't see any mercy in this. Haven't you seen this, this, this? So the answer is that it is the end that defines. It is the end that is the ultimate criteria of uh, deciding whether or not something is merciful or not. Um, Imam Razi gives the example of Al-Qissa Musa wal Khidr alayhim as -salam. He gives the example of uh, Sayyidina Musa alayhim salam and Khidr alayhim salam. And he says that uh, uh, perhaps you can reflect on this example and this is the journey that began with one kind of uh, understanding for Sayyidina Musa and it ended with another kind of uh, understanding. فَإِنَّ مُوسَ كَانَ يَبْنِي الْحُكْمُ عَلَى زُبَاخِرِ وَكَانَ وَرَاهُمْ عَلَى زُبَاخِرِ الْأَمُورِ so at the beginning of the journey, Musa salam, is looking at the Zawahir, just like our child who is 21 or older, 22 or 23, 25. You know, these things have no age limitation. These questions can arise when one is 40 or 16, depends. So Zawahir, the appearances, he says, here is an example for you to reflect on it, that when Musa -Islam begins the journey, he is looking at the Zawahir as the, at, at the appearances. So he actually Fastankara Tahrik al Safina, Makatal Ghulam, Amarat al Jidar al Mail. Musa -Islam Looking at the appearances, he condemns the scuttling of the boat, the killing of the child, the fixing of the of the wall that was falling. Whereas uh, Khidr alayhi salam uh, knew the reality of things, al al haqaiq wal asrar, the mysteries of the things. And uh, then, when finally he explains. أَمَّا السَّفِينَةَ فَكَانَتْ لِمَسَاكِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ فِي الْبَحْرِ That the, the, the Safina, the boat was, uh, belonged to the two orphans, to Masakin, uh, and they were uh, in dire need, uh, who were uh, actually making a living out of uh, this use of this boat. And... Uh, I rendered it unserviceable because you know the story, right? An aibaha akana barahum, and this is from the Quran in Surah Al Kaf. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala explains all of these things to through uh, Sayyidina Khidr to Musa alayhi salam that there was a king who was coming and he was snatching every workable boat. So I made this boat unworkable so that it wouldn't be taken away. And uh, youth likewise uh, 
Um, he was, uh, they were children, like he was a child. Amal Gulama Fakana Babahu Muminai. So, you know, they were believers, and Allah SWT knew that this child is going to be doing kufr and tughyan. So, he, Yubdilahuma uh, Rabbuhuma Khairan Minhu. So, Allah SWT replaced this child with others and likewise the the wall that, that has the khazana that had the treasure underneath it kanzullahuma makana abuhuma salihan so these were the righteous parents and the, the children were still young you know the story so this he says is uh, is one of the illustrations of the wisdom and the hikmah that uh, you are unable to see unless you reflect on these hidden secrets and the great wisdom uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in the, uh, in the amur, in the matters of this dunya. Um, and he says that uh, If you reflect on these, you will have an inner opening that will allow you to find the Zalika Yazhulaka Asara Min Min Bahara Asra Rikaulu Rahman Rahim. From the mystery, from the ocean of the mysteries of Rahman Rahim, perhaps you will be granted. Uh, a little, a little uh, share if you were to reflect on this. Subhanallah. So, Rahman, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. Ya Lan Tahlimun Karimun Azimun Tohibul Afwa Fafwal Naya Karim. Let's make the, the word of Rah Rahman Rahim part of our day as much as we can. Are there any questions? Inshallah, we continue with the surah. We seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy in all our affairs. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina azab an-nar ya lan tahrimun karimun azimun tuhibul afwafun ya karim rabbana zalamna anfusana wa in lam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al-khasirin wa salli wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.